Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and this is the Leonardo Fly the Mad Dog X for prepared version 4. So this is the 64-bit version. There's no visual difference or system difference or anything between the 64-bit and the 32-bit version. The 32-bit version is just designed for the older versions of prepared and FSX. I prefer filming in prepared version 4. So that's why this is in prepared version 4, before everybody gets all concerned that I'm not covering FSX. It's the same plane! It doesn't matter! Anyway, this is a fully loaded video. Well, technically it's not. Technically, this is an almost fully loaded. What fully loaded means, by the way, there's a bug with this, and you can hear it right now. Something, I think it's the APU, keeps spooling up and down, up and down, up and down. It doesn't affect the operation of the aircraft at all. It's just really annoying, so I'm gonna probably turn the sound down for this bit, but at the very least, for now, take my headphones off. Okay, for a fully loaded video, for those of you who are relatively new to the channel, fully loaded's are where I basically load everything I can into the sim and really push it to its limits and also try to do things. I'm not an airline pilot, I'm just a nerd that plays flight sims, but try to do things as much by the book as I can figure out and hopefully give you guys some help in figuring things out. This is almost fully loaded though because normally when I do fully loaded I actually run two computers. One computer has all the charts and the maps and the navigation and the weather and the other computer does the sim. I also normally have ATC running and traffic. This is almost fully loaded because today I'm only using one computer with all that stuff on it and I don't have ATC or traffic. Reasoning for that is I'm having some PC issues. I'm actually in the middle of a transition between all my PCs. There'll be a video on that later this week. Uh, so we're, we're doing things as almost fully loaded. This is also kind of a review. This is the first video I've done on this. So let me walk you around here. This, obviously the Mad Dog, is an MD-82. Now, Leonardo have a bit of an enviable reputation with this aircraft. I have a friend, some of you heard him on another video when I did the first look at the Rotate Sim MD-80, who is, or was, he's now transitioned to Airbus, but he was an MD-80 pilot with about 11,000 hours in the Beastie. He has a home-built sim. That is to say, in his spare room at home, he has built a fixed base simulator and it is mainly used to fly Leonardo's previous version of this. That's how good the Leonardo MD-80 was and hopefully still is. I, I'll, give you, I, I, I'll give you some spoilers. It is. It is amazing. This has... A, we'll skip right to the end. Actually, the end of the final part of the video right here, my summary and conclusion. This is now my favorite aircraft ever in any sim ever. It's that good. Let me show you around. The attention to detail on the modeling here is absolutely outstanding. Now, this was delayed because their texture person and painting person actually suffered a very serious injury, and he was out of the loop for quite a while, so the team actually delayed releasing this for a bit. Thankfully, he's recovering and is now back at work, and you can see why they waited for him. He does some outstanding work. All these rivets and bumps and the weathering and wearing of these textures is so good. Really, really good. I actually posted a picture on Facebook yesterday of this thing coming into land, and it looks real. It's it's nuts how good a job these guys have done in the visual modeling of this. You'll see some more of that as well when you go inside into the flight deck in a minute. Absolutely beautiful. There are some other technologies included with this that haven't been included within a Leonardo aircraft before, notably TFDI. Is it, it is TFDI, isn't it? TFDI's True Flight? Real Flight? True, no, that's not. True Glass, sorry. TFDI's True Glass and the other one. I can't remember. True Light, True Light, Real Light, Real Light. <laughs> Whatever it is. TFDI have two technologies. One covers lights and one covers glass. Uh, and, and they put those in this and they are stonking as well. The only downside is that when they're all running, like early in the morning as the sun's coming up and you've got a lot of shadows and a lot of lights on and reflections and stuff, it can be a bit of a burden on The Sims frame rate. So just bear that in mind. In terms of the fully loaded aspect of this, what am I running? Obviously, Leonardo's Fly the Mad Dog X. The airport we are at today is the brand new, just released in the past week or so, Imagine Sim Atlanta update for prepared version 4. I always wanted to use Atlanta, I've had it for the longest time, but the performance was atrocious. They've updated it for prepared version 4, taking advantage of many of prepared version 4's new features, and as you can see, it's pretty darn smooth. We will be flying into FS Dream Team's Memphis today. So Atlanta to Memphis, only one hour in the air and then back down again. So two fairly heavy sceneries, Orbex FTS Global, of course, the clouds and all that good stuff and the environmental effects are being provided by Rex. 
Sky Force, which is the first time I put that on video. The weather itself is being provided by Active Sky 2017 for prepared or whatever it is. The prepared version 4 version of Active Sky, the current one. Obviously, my controls are being managed with FSU IPC. What else is running? Oh, this camera. The fact that the camera is moving. That would be FSFX Packages Chase Plane. I no longer use Easy Dock because Chase Plane is better. So I actually published all my views for this. If you have this aircraft and you have Chase Plane, go into Chase Plane's community section and you'll see a whole bunch of frugal sim views, which are the views I'm going to be using today in this very video for your entertainment. This is such an amazing looking aircraft. Now also, the MD-80 actually, I gotta admit, is probably my all time favorite jet anyway. It's just the Leonardo one is the best one in the sim and so it's my favorite now. The reason it's my all time favorite jet is it's actually a unique aircraft. Let me put this into this cinematic sweepy flyby thing. There we go. It's actually a unique jet airliner in that it exists on that cusp of the old to the new. It's actually a DC-9. And then what they did with the DC-9 is they put in a lot of avionics and put in the uh, CDU and all the auto flight systems and all that good stuff. And then it became MD-80 and obviously MD-82, 88 and so on and so on and so on. So it's actually a mix of the old and the new. In terms of flying it, it flies very much like uh, one of the earlier commercial aviation jets. Very, very hands-on, very mechanical, very raw. But you still have that automation now because of the MD-80 variant. In fact, my friend who is the MD-80 pilot, his rating actually says DC-9. When you get rated on this, you're actually rated for the DC-9 and then you kind of pick up the MD-80 bits as you go, which is kind of cool. So, always been a fan of the DC-9. Did a DC-9 video looking at the cool sky McFat DC-9 years ago on this channel and raved about that. This is just wonderful. So DC-9, MD-80, those two are my favorite jet airliners of all. And this one is amazing. Let's just sit here and admire the beauty. In fact, let's not sit here and admire the beauty. Let me show you some of the other apps that are running because this thing comes with a handy configgy tool, which is this. Now this is actually very, very cool. And I'm gonna do a separate video just on this. The reason this is cool is in all my fully loaded, I typically prepare a flight plan with a professional flight planner like PFPX. And I calculate performance and I calculate all that good stuff and weights and loads and balance and blah, 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 in that and then transfer it across. If you don't have that stuff though, it doesn't matter because look at this, fuel route planner. Here's, here's our route. It's a very simple route. Direct to Hominin and then from Hominin into Memphis. You can use this to build a route. And when you do so, it updates over here the fuel that you're going to need. And you can modify the fuels over here and say, I want a little bit more reserve or I want a little bit extra or a little bit extra for taxiing and all that good stuff. So it will calculate all this stuff here and then transfer it across here to the load manager where you can set the passengers and the bags and all that good stuff and show you the weights and balances. It will show you the center of gravity, which you'll need to calculate takeoff trim. And it will show you if you're out of parameter. So if the aircraft is unbalanced and all that good stuff. The reason this is so cool though, is you can just go to somewhere like flightaware.com find a flight that actually happens with this aircraft and then just use the add button to add in the waypoints in this flight planner here. When you click on save, it will actually export a company route that you can load into the Mad Dog when you get in the cockpit without having to type everything in if it's a more complex route than the one I'm flying today. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to do a separate video showing you exactly how that works. Today though, I am doing it the traditional fully loaded way. I do have a PFPX flight plan and I do actually have another computer here running you can't see it though, which is a Microsoft Surface. It just shut down. Okay, so the flight plan. Let me show you the flight plan. Uh, there it is. There's the flight plan. So I had calculated this in uh, PFPX and then transferred the numbers across. So our takeoff uh, release fuel, for example, is 23,000 pounds, which is a lot more than the add-on that that configuration tool would normally give you for a flight this simple because I have the possible alternate programmed in and everything else. I've got my payload in here, 127 plus two passengers, giving me 31,000 uh, pounds. Zero fuel weight then is 111,201 pounds. And so what I did in the config tool here was I went into the load manager and I jiggled with the cargo numbers and the passenger numbers. And I got 1,000, uh, sorry, 111,208 pounds. So I'm, I'm just seven pounds out from what I planned in PFPX. By the way, if you get this aircraft, you don't need to have this running as I currently do. You do all this prior to loading up the sim and then just click on that check mark. The next time you go into the sim and load the aircraft, it will be set up good to go. Here's the route here, fairly simple. I'm gonna take the NASA 2 SID 
out of Atlanta and then go to Vuz and then direct to Hominan and then fly the Mona 3 Star into Memphis. Now, I know the weather. I've done this flight already. I know that we're going to be landing on runway 18 center in Memphis. It's pretty crappy weather when we get there, but that's all the better for this uh, video, I think. We're also using not full takeoff power. I did actually calculate takeoff performance. I use a program called TopCat for that. TopCat does support the MD-82. So I was able to calculate the 15 degrees here, 15 degrees takeoff. We're gonna use flex takeoff power with an assumed temperature of 43 degrees C. If you don't know what that is, again, many of you are fairly new and it's some time since I did a proper video like this, most airlines don't actually use full power to take off because that puts too much strain on the engine. They use the bare minimum maximum power for takeoff in order to preserve the engines and lengthen the time between services. So we're putting in an assumed temperature. We actually lower the maximum power output of both of those mighty engines, uh, but to the bare minimum max power we need to clear the runway that we're planning to take off on. That's that. So here's the route, although the actual route up here is very simple, once you map it out into the various waypoints, it is quite lengthy, but it is only an hour in the air. The only deviation I'm gonna do from this flight plan is this. You'll notice at NASA 2, we are forecast to be at flight level 340 and then descending flight level 320 prior to top of descent. We're actually not gonna do that. We're gonna go flight level 340 and let the aircraft tell us where top of descent is and then fly all the way down into runway 18 center at Memphis, where we'll be doing a flaps 40 landing manually, of course. So that's that. Let's get back into the aircraft. Let me go back to prepared here and drop back in here. And I can turn my stand up now because now it's eerily quiet, which I don't like. You'll notice that the windows are fogged up. That's one new thing that's built into this. They have all those wonderful little effects there that we've been sitting here talking so long, the windows have all fogged up. So we'll fix that by opening this one. Fabulous. Now, the other add-on that I'm gonna be using, which got released at the same time as Leonardo's Fly the Mad Dog X, love saying that, is FS to Crew. Now, many people, some people, don't like FS to Crew. I think you're nuts. If you fly, a complex airliner like this in the real world, you never do so alone. There is always somebody else sitting there who does a lot of the work for you. That's what FS to Crew does. It is a voice controlled first officer and he will take over, or she, you can customize it. He will take, or she will take over. My goodness, the, se the anti-sexism thingy, he, she, it, they will take over <laughs> gender neutral. Uh, a lot of the uh, functions that a real first officer flying an MD-82 would actually do. That means that you don't have to learn as much about the aircraft as you normally would if you're gonna fly it in a sim on your own. So from my point of view, FS to crew is a wonderful way to get acquainted with the aircraft and its procedures and how to operate it as a captain. Then, once you get bored of doing things the FS to crew way, by all means, hit those manuals and learn how to do absolutely everything in the cockpit on your own. Let's go into config here. Got a config tool. I am using GSX, so I don't need FS to crew to manage my jetway doors, gate departure, gate arrival, or UGCX, nor do I need FS to crew to give me pushback, so we'll turn that off. I am using a US crew. My pre-flight time is gonna be 30 minutes. I'll cut the video. You don't have to sit through all 30 minutes. Now, let's get started. So to get started, what we need to do is prepare the aircraft before the first officer jumps in. By the way, I'll apologize now, FS to crew has the same problems that Windows voice recognition has always had with me and that it doesn't like my accent. So certain words that I would normally say like auto for automatic, I have to put on an American accent and say auto, otherwise it doesn't recognize me. I have trained it, I need to do better at training it, but like I said, I'm, ch I'm changing my PC, so I'm not gonna spend all the time to do that now. Anyway, what we need to do, we need to make sure the parking brake is on, that would be here. Parking brake is now on. Then we need to go upstairs and change, sorry, turn on the battery switch, which is this little switch here. And it actually has two positions. What you do is you pull it down and then you click it again to turn that line horizontal, which locks the battery in position. With that done, we can go ahead and do a fire loop test. Now the fire loop test is actually done by depressing both of these two buttons at the same time. So what you do is you press, move the mouse and then press the other one. Fire left engine. Fire right engine. Fire left engine. Fire right engine. And everything is working Fire exactly as it should. Now here's another bug actually that I've found with this. I'll get the bugs out of the way first. There's not that many, just the two that I'm pointing out here. One is that recurring spool up sound and the other one is this. 
You notice the engines are currently showing something going on, but there is nothing going on. That's going to make these readouts a little bit weird when I actually do start the engine. Normally you'd wait for N2 to go from 0 up to 20% and then feed in fuel. You're actually going to see them count down from 25 to 0 and then back up again, which is kind of odd, but it's okay. We'll deal with it for now. I am certain the Leonardo chaps are going to go and update all that. Having done the fire loop test, we now need to go and connect external ground power. We're going to be 30 minutes here on the ground, so I don't really want to run the APU for that whole time. So the way we'll do this is we'll look up. Sorry, if I can find the right button. There we go. Look up and then look up again. We need to turn on the maintenance interphone here in order to press this button, which gives us the view changer for the Mad Dog. We'll click on this view for the Mad Dog and we'll go to ground services and I will click on connect ground power. Connect the GPU, please. Stand by. That doesn't work unless you have the maintenance interphone switch set correctly. So now it is set correctly. We're just going to wait. Should see some lights here for ground service power coming on. By the way, this green bar is FS GPU crew. connected. Picking up what I'm saying. Great. Now, this is the ground service electrical power for ground servicing. You don't go and flick this switch here. You don't need to. That's the ground service bus. What you need to do is go down here and flick these two instead. Autopilot. And that one. Good. So ground service power is now up, and what we now need to do is jump on over here to the first officer's seat. We will turn on the position of strobe lights to the both position there, and we will turn on the wing nacelles to on, indicating that this aircraft is now under power. And at this point, we are good to dive in with FS to crew, which I will now do. So, back up to config, and I can click on start. Any second, he'll turn Hi, up. Here How goes. are you today? I'm great. There's FS to crew not picking me up. Great. That's great. Ah! It got me. So now he will go about doing his things. He'll do a lot of the pre-flight tests and checks and start flicking switches and knobs and all sorts of stuff. You see him doing that there. He decided it's a little bit dark in here, so he's going to turn on the lights. Thanks! I was actually thinking it's a little bit dark in here. Meanwhile, we will go through and do the rest of it. So we're going to cage the standby attitude indicator here by pulling it, holding it, and releasing it. That's caged. We'll do the emergency light test. We do that with the flight attendant just to let them know everything's fine. This is a test. So PA emergency light test. We'll look up here. And whoops, I went too far. No, I didn't. And I will switch this PA here and emergency light test. on. Lights coming on. Emergency lights off. Great. So that worked. Now we will do the arrival elevation data. Arrival elevation at Memphis is going to be 500 feet. So we'll just dial this up to number five. There's the test. That's not me doing that. That's the first officer doing all of that. <laughs> Excellent walk around. We did that. And now we're going to the FMS. My goodness, that piercing. We'll go into the FMS and flight control panel set up down here. So, pausing it. This works very much the same as any other FMS or CDU you have ever dealt with. And so, no great surprises here. We are in Atlanta. Kilo, Alpha, Tango, Lima. Oink. We will pick up the GPS position. I do know the gate number, but I'm not going to key it in. It's kind of pointless. And now we'll go into route. I do have a company route because PFPX exported one, but that config tool will also export a company route as well. That company route is Kilo, Alpha, Tango, Lima, Kilo, Mike, Echo, Mike, Zero, One. We'll put that in there. There's my company route. We expect to be taking runway 09 left today. We'll put that in here. We will activate the route and execute it. <coughs> now, while I'm here, I might as well go and do the departure and arrival since I already know what they are. So, departure and arrival, 09 left. And we are taking the NASA 2 departure, and we're taking that all the way out to Vuzz there, execute. And our arrival, let's go back into departures and arrivals, sorry, click on index, Memphis arrivals. As you saw from my flight plan, we are expecting to get ILS 18 center, and we will be picking up the, where is it, where is it, Mona 2, there we go, Mona 2, and HOM is our transition point. Execute. Great, that's all done. Let's go back to init ref. Now we can enter the fuel 
zero fuel weight and expected reserve fuel cost index and so on. So the fuel schedule, the amount of fuel that we currently have on board, looking at my notes over here, I can flick you back so you can see them over here, is uh, there, release fuel, 23,056. So two, three, and you have to put in whether it's an A or M schedule, it's an A. So 23, zero fuel weight today is 111,000, so one, one, one. We might as well go ahead and put the point two in, why not? Our expected reserve fuel is 1,000. And our cost index, we'll go 50. Because this is a bit of a monster in the air. Pull up. Cruise altitude today is 340, flight level 340. Transition Pull altitude up. is correct. That is the correct transition altitude. Now we go to take off and it wants us to enter the V speeds. We can calculate the V speeds because the aircraft does it for us. In fact, my first officer Edwin. here will actually give Edwin. them to me in a minute. Here. But Edwin. we'll here. beat him. Here they are. Tailwind. Let's here. wait for the test Tailwind. to finish here. talking. Tailwind. Here. You can see all the dials and stuff lighting up while he's doing that. Are you done? You finished? Okay. So V1 is 133. V rotate Dog. is 138. Dog. And V2 is 145. Done. So we have all those Over set up. Speed. Close that window. 145 for V2, which means setting up the MCP up here, we want 155. V2 plus 10 for our climb out. We'll set that in. It takes a while to wind these up. You can ask FS the crew to do that, but I'm going to keep it simple for today. Our heading at takeoff is 095. TCAS system test, okay. TCAS system test, okay. Lab. We'll wind this all the way up. Stabilizer. He's doing a takeoff right. test. You can actually ask FS the crew to take off, and you become the first officer, which is kind of cool as well. The maximum bank is going to be 15 degrees at takeoff. We are climbing up to, in, I expect, 5,000 feet. So set in 5,000, pull that button. That's all good. 095 is done. 155 is done. We are all good to go here. Next thing we need to do is set up our speed bugs. There's a handy trick you can do to set all these up with the V speeds we just entered, which is just click it. And that will dial in all the V speeds, uh, all the speed bugs for you without you having to do anything. Now, with all that done, we can do a pre flight briefing. I don't know what to say on those, but I'll give you the. What you do with FS to Crew is you have a key phrase that starts it, then you talk a, a bunch of rubbish, and then you have a key phrase that ends it. So the key phrase to start it is Are you ready for the departure brief? I'm ready. And the key phrase to end it is Any questions? No questions. Good, departure brief done. <laughs> so <laughs> the next step in our checklist, pre-start procedure, FMS performance page, we've already done that. Pre flap setting. He's done his pre-start check, completed to the line. Now we go into the flap setting window. This is kind of cool. Down here, the way flaps work in this and takeoff trim is you have a center of gravity, which is calculated based on the weight of the aircraft. You see it's 10 point something. In fact, if I go back on over to the config tool, here you can see it's 10.8. So on a center of gravity of 10.8 and a takeoff flap setting of 15, this is the long trim. This is where the trim needs to be for takeoff. So all you do is you hold the trimmer down now to move the trim wheel down to that position. A bit of a shocker for those of you used to Boeings is trimming causes an alarm like this. Get used to that noise. You're going to hear it a lot. Oh my word, that's a lot of trim. Captain, here's the takeout data card numbers for you. Thank you. So the aircraft is now trimmed. He's given us our takeoff data numbers, which is great. All I need to do now is go ahead. We set the stabilizer trim, so I need to set the seatbelt sign on because passengers are going to start boarding in a minute. Great. Everything so far looking delightful. Hi, right, Captain. Is the fuel quantity okay? Yes. Okay. All right. So when they check the fuel quantity, that means we're pretty close to boarding. I'm not going to do the whole GSX boarding because it kind of gets confused between GSX and FS to crew. And you'll hear FS to crew continue to board passengers long after GSX has told me to close all the doors. So we're not going to worry about that. We'll just let FS to crew do its boarding thing. As you saw, this is a 30 minute. Uh, process to go through boarding this, so we'll be cutting the aircraft after we get them 
to ask if we want to start boarding. In fact, once they start boarding, I'll probably do the pre-start checklist. In fact, let's do that now. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Pre-start checklist below the line. Pre-start check below the line. Covers and pins. Removed. Aircraft log and documents. Checked on board. Altimeters. QNH 29095 set and checked. Checked. Fuel, oil, hydraulic quantity. Checked. Check. Zero fuel weight. Hi, Captain. Are you ready to start the boarding? Yes. 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 All right. Checked. Checked. TRP. Okay, now we're going to do takeoff flex. So let me go ahead and do that. This is why we work checklist. We set a takeoff flex with 43 degrees. So the way we do that is we switch this down, turn off art, turn on takeoff flex, and whack this up to 43 degrees. And then we tell FS to crew 43 degrees, takeoff flex. Takeoff flex. Check. Stabilizer. Set. Yes, yeah, see what I mean about it having problems with my accent. I really need to work on training this a bit better. Set. Check. Flaps. Takeoff selector. Stowed. Speed bugs. Set. Set. Pre-start check complete. Oh, there she goes. May I take your coat? She's going to go on with that incessantly for a little while. There's not much else to do. What we need to do now is just sit patiently and wait until boarding is complete and the load sheet arrives. Incidentally, that little config tool that I showed you for this prints out a load sheet on paper. It will also print that into the cockpit, which you'll see in a little bit when that happens. I'll see you when it does. All right, so I decided to come back a little bit sooner because I did forget some stuff. First of all, you'll notice down here, localizer fail, lie slope fail. That's because uh, VOR1 is tuned to a localizer that it can't pick up. What we need to do is really tune that to something we're gonna use. So let's go ahead to our SID here and we see we got Vulcan 114.4 by the way here's our departure take off on this runway and then turn down to grits Heisman Trin Tyron Turn all the way up to NASA and then Vulcan 114.4 so we'll dial that in up here 114.4 and looking at that chart we're going to be approaching it on the 274 radial so we might as well set the course of 274 just as a cross-reference, just to verify that we are, that everything is working, you know, that the navigation systems and what they're telling us matches up with the real world. Having done that, by the way, talking about matching up with the real world, I didn't check my route. So I'm gonna pop open the CDU, we'll pop open the primary navigation display here, and we'll put the uh, system into plan mode, go to legs, and we can start stepping through this and see if there are any problems. So grits, Heisman, that one, <laughs> NASA, out to there, and I can already see we have a discontinuity after VUZ. So what we'll do is we'll bring up HOM there and execute. So VUZ to HOM, there to GOSI, to COSOR, LONI, MONA, ZAMET, and the ZAMET is now saying vectors. That would be vectors from ATC to get to LORI. We'll remove the vectors because I'm not using ATC and we'll put LORI straight in there. Done. So ZAMET, down to lorry and that puts us on our final approach and there's our missed approach right there so that's all looking good click this click this we'll turn this back into map mode and that's all set up now we can sit back and wait for the load sheet notice by the way it is still saying vor fail that's because we're on the ground surrounded by buildings once we get in the air we'll be able to pick up that vor but not right now hi captain Passenger boarding is complete, and I've got the load sheet here for you when you're All ready. All right, there's my load sheet. Thank you. Thank you. Have a safe flight. There it is. This is the load sheet that that config tool produces when it actually prints out. You can verify it in the cockpit as well. So, uh, MacTau 10.8, center of gravity, basically, make sure that we are 10.8 down there, which we are. Our takeoff uh, weight. We already set the zero fuel weight, 111.208, so we've got all that. Uh, take off fuel, yeah, everything's looking absolutely perfect. So we can close this now, and we can get ready for the final part of getting this aircraft underway. By the way, normally on these fully loaded videos, I split them into two or three parts. I'm not going to break tradition. This will be a three-part series. Don't worry, 
You're only going to get a day break in between each part. They're all going to come fairly fast because, as I said, I'm changing my PCs. So anything I record right now has to be edited quick smart and uploaded to YouTube or I have a problem. Oh, here we go. Hi, Captain. We're all ready to go in the back now. Thank you. All right. And if you need anything else, just let me know. Okay, so let's pop open the PS thing here and make sure all our doors are closed. Red means open, green means closed. Now notice there's a little line which always catches me, and if you move the mouse over it, it says forward stairway. You need to make sure the forward stairway is up as well, otherwise you have problems. Also, there can be some interaction between FS to crew and the aircraft and GSX. So a few times, many of you saw my screenshot on Facebook, flying along with the cargo doors open. That's uh, that's because everything got a little bit out of sync, which is why I turned door handling and FS to crew off, and why just for the sake of this first video, I'm not gonna use GSX loading. So we'll close all these doors. Hopefully I clicked the right spot. I did, great. Now because we're gonna get ready to start, I do need to think about powering up the APU. So up here, we'll click on the start pump, even though our first officer already turned on the right forward pump. I'm still gonna turn on the start pump. We'll click this to run and then start. There's the APU there. Gonna wait for that to spool up. Once it's in place, we'll turn APU air on, switch over to the APU bus, turn off the external power, and then talk to the ground and disconnect external power. You can also have FS to crew do all that for you as well. This is kind of a mix though in this video of the manual way and the FS to crew way. I just kind of prefer it. You can see it spooling up. Now you'll notice that you can't hear very much from the APU. You'll also notice in the air, you don't hear much from the engines. That's because you sit at the front and the aircraft's engines are way back on the tail. You actually can't hear very much from the engines in the real aircraft either. All right, APU's coming up. We should see a blue light. There it is. I'll give it a moment more. You can still see that little needle still turning a bit. Great, so switch on the APU. Switch off external power. We'll talk to the ground now and tell them. You're clear to disconnect. Thanks. Now I'm also gonna turn off the yoke in the cockpit because it obscures some crucial dials that I need to see while we're flying this thing. We'll wait for this external power light to go out, which it has gone up here and turn off the maintenance interphone and we're all good there. So with all that done, now we can run through the important before start check. So, before start check, before start check. Parking brakes. Set. Doors. Closed. Closed. Startup clearance. Approved. Approved. Before start check completed. Ready for engine start. All right. Let's turn this off once again. Now normally you could ask FS to crew to do the pushback. I have GSX, I prefer GSX. We're gonna push back with the nose going left and the tail going right. That will point us directly at the runway we're gonna be using to take off. And then we will run through the engine start. Now I'm not gonna talk you through this while I'm doing it because it's gonna need to go fairly fast because of this little baguette. That's his seatbelt by the way. Weird. Um, because of this little baguette with the engine displays, I need to do this quick. If you if you are running this and they haven't patched it yet in the version you've got, and you're seeing engine showing N2 when you don't have any N2, and you're using FS to crew, you need to follow the FS to crew prompts and get things done quick smart, because FS to crew will turn off the ignition as soon as it thinks it should, which means you often end up with one engine not starting. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and call GSX. Push back, uh, nose left, tail right, and no, the engines will be started during the pushback. And now I'll shut up talking to you and get ready to go on this thing. Bypass them inserted. Relief parking brakes. Commencing 
Need to check we've got above 36 PSI up here, which we do. So we're good to go. Here we go. Start right engine. Starting right engine. Right start valve open. N2, oil pressure. N1, fuel on. Fuel on. Fuel flow. EGT. Right start valve closed. Start left engine. Starting left engine. Stabilizing. Left start valve open. N2, oil pressure. N1, fuel on. Fuel on. Fuel flow. EGT. And that's it. Notice I had to do it a bit fast. Now we're going to watch that left engine. Look, it's dropping on the fuel flow. Closed. You can work around this issue I've found. If it doesn't pick up, I'm going to keep an eye on it and see if it picks up. Stabilizing. Okay, for you guys, if it doesn't pick up and that left engine does not come online, which this one just didn't, the workaround is simply to go up here and turn the ignition back on the system A. There we go. Now it's up. Then put the system A, the, the ignition back into off so the FS the crew doesn't get confused. Now we're good. It's a quirk. I'm sure they'll fix it. I'm sure maybe I'm doing something wrong. This is a study level aircraft. Who knows? So after engine start, we're now going to go up and turn on the galley power so they can make hot drinks and stuff. We will check the engine loads within limits. This is important. Battery volt, right, left, external power should be off. APU at this point should be off and it's not as we just saw running that check. So what I'm going to do is turn the APU back to off. And we should see the RPM start to drop. I'm not going to wait for it. It will drop. It's now off. So we're good. Parking brake is set. What cautions do we have? Parking brake's on. We'll clear that one. So electrical loads are checked and in limits. Air conditioning supply switches now also need to go on. These two. One. They go down to auto or auto. Like so. Now checking our enunciators. We're using a flex takeoff to 43 degrees. Altitude hold to 6,000 feet heading hold. When we'll take off, we'll tell FS to crew to change all that. There's a routine that we'll go through. That, however, will be in the next video. This was part one. In part two, we'll do the taxi and the takeoff. Now, I like this aircraft so much, I'm going to do something I never normally do in a fully loaded, which is manually take off and fly to 10,000 feet because I love flying this. Until then, though, my name is Fugal. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.